ladies and gentlemen, at this point, at four o'clock, I'd like to um, uh, introduce uh, uh, Tante Zag Dakama and um, Storm Jansa van Rensburg from the Zeitz Museum of Contemporary Art from Africa. Um, Storm, I'm going to stop. Um, thank you very much uh, for, for um, joining us this afternoon and giving us uh, your uh, valuable time. I'm going to um, stop my uh, screen sharing from here. Um, and Storm, I should have given you the processes, so it's all over to you there. There we go. Thank you very much. And um, I hope it's going to be um, happening. I hope you can see all my screen. Um, thank you very much, Matthew, um, and to Strauss and Co. for the opportunity to really talk about um, to talk about Zeitz Mocha. Um, uh, it's been a very interesting and challenging time for all of us in the um, not only in the cultural world, but we've also been, you know, kind of really had to take a moment to kind of assess the work that we do, the kind of approaches that we have, um, and and kind of like figure out things pretty much. Is from scratch. Um, and so uh, Tanazani and myself will just give you an oversight of some of the, the achievements of the institution um, before you know, the pandemic and then kind of the work that we're currently doing and have been doing um, and then some, some future glimpses about the direction that we, did, that we are taking. Um, just a very brief in introduction for um, those that recently joined. Um, I'm Storm Jansen van Rensburg. I'm the senior curator at Zeitz Mocha. I joined the institution um, uh, 11 months ago. I um, am South African, but I lived in, in Europe and in the United States um, until, until last year. Um, I was uh, previously working independently in Berlin, Germany, and then spent five years as, um, as head curator um, at the Savannah College of Art and Design uh, Museum of Art, um, where I oversaw an exhibitions program um, they a uh, very informative time for me, but was time to come home. Um, and so uh, uh, on the call from Koyo uh, Kuo, um, our executive director and chief curator, um, when she joined in May last year, um, kind of answered a call to come back home and very thankful um, for this opportunity to be here and to also kind of work on um, a kind of a, a job that's larger than than any of us um, and that's to really uh, work on the foundations of an institution um, for contemporary art of uh, for Africa and its diaspora and all its complexity um, and to really kind of like work also with a wonderful group of um, curatorial colleagues and Tanazani Lakama uh, my colleague here as well so over to you Tanazani yeah thanks um hi everyone um yeah, I'm Tandazani Lakama, Assistant Curator at uh, Zeitzmoka. I joined Zeitzmoka in December 2017, and uh, previously, prior to that, I worked at the National Gallery of Zimbabwe for about three and a half years. Thank you. Um, so just a bit of an overview of recent practices and some of the changes that's happened, um, you know, over the last year and, and few months, um, you know, kind of certainly since also um, the arrival of Koyoku, um, is that there's been a shift at the institution um, from a kind of more generic group exhibitions into very focused um, solo exhibitions um, of various scales and, and, and ambition. And certainly very proud of the um, achievements of Zeitz Mocha and mounting William Kendridge's Why Should I Hesitate Putting Drawings to Work, the largest retrospective um, of the artist um, to date, um, a significant exhibition for us um, that has really set the tone for the kind of work that we are also foreseeing happening in the future. This kind of approach to, to really kind of delve into the individual practice of artists as a way that we understand um, uh, the kind of discourse and ideas and kind of nuance of contemporary African art. Um, through individual voices is something that we will profile and so the scale of this kind of exhibition this ambition we will certainly take forward and later we'll talk about some of the projects that we are planning for the future that will be on this the, the kind of scale um, it's also uh, great to 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 let you know that the exhibition is traveling it's the first for Zeitz Mocha um, we the exhibition is traveling in its entirety to to Deichterhallen uh, a major institution for contemporary art and photography photography in Hamburg in Germany 
where it will open on the 21st of October and run until April 2021, um, which is a significant achievement for us, um, also considering the the kind of like intensity of the last couple of months during the, 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 the pandemic. Um, and so currently we are busy packing up the exhibition and it will depart in August um, to, to Germany. So very, very pleased with this. Um, a part of the kind of way that we're also working is kind of like um, also through a more ambitious pub publishing program. Um, so uh, William's exhibition uh, uh, kind of had a, a significant monograph that was published um, and edited by the institution. And we foresee also this to happen. And so various kind of scale in, um, uh, projects um, as for, for our individual exhibitions. Um, so one of the projects that we had last year was a solo exhibition by a local artist, Nobuko Taba, titled which means we make plans. Um, and we, we had this exhibition in a space that um, we called the Dust House or the project space, which is basically a space that we've set aside for um, young and emerging artists to make experimental work um, or to make work that they usually wouldn't have the opportunity to make at, in other spaces. Um, so we had Nobuko's exhibition, which included, um, as you can see in the slide, um, she filled the whole room and plastered all the walls and furniture with um, what she called China bags as a way of speaking about uh, xenophobia and um, the, the xenophobic uh, undertones associated with the bag and migration. Um, but it was also an exhibition where she was thinking about how she had to migrate from place to place, living in an informal settlement in Cape Town and then uh, also going back a few times a year to um, a rural farm setting. And um, it really resonated a lot with our local audiences because um, everyone could pick out something. Uh, the blanket was familiar to a lot of people locally as well and had different associations. And it was also one of the um, first times uh, Storm mentioned a publication program. Um, so Nobu with Nobuko's exhibition, it was one of the first exhibitions where we created a little, uh, very simple booklet um, for our audiences. And we've continued to do that with all of our shows. And just to say that these, um, these the smaller publications we um, give out for free and we print up to 30,000 copies. Um, so any visitor that comes to the museum can take can take one away. Um, we also currently, well, um, opened a new uh, space for the collection. Um, uh, previously, the collection was kind of spread through different floors and there's been now a dedicated space on the fourth floor um, of the museum, uh, which is dedicated to, to the collection. Um, we put together an exhibition titled Two Together, which looked at um, two objects or two artists in one room and kind of dialogue between these objects, um, kind of like also part of the work of the institution to also do kind of more research, more in-depth research into the collection itself and the kind of extraordinary artist that's represented um, uh, in, in the collection as well. And also kind of look at new ways that we can present these works um, and uh, yeah, come, come into kind of new, uh, new considerations, um, uncover new meanings um, and also give a kind of a hopefully a kind of a complex insight into to, to, to the wonderful practices of the continent and the diaspora as reflected through through the, uh, the collection. Um, Otobon Kanga. Yeah, um, we had the honor of um, hosting Otobon Kanga's uh, first major museum exhibition on the continent of Africa. And it was titled Acts at a Crossroads. And it was basically trying to think about what happens when two lines meet or what happens at, a, at an intersection. And um, the exhibition had um, performative elements. It had uh, lots of text and, and poetry. And um, her work in her work, she uses a lot of organic materials. So here you can see we filled one of the rooms with pebbles and it was really um, interesting for our team. Um, s s some people had to go around Cape Town looking for a very specific type of 
uh, pebbles. Uh, she was, she's really keen on sourcing local materials as kind of a way of honoring wherever she creates this installation and other bodies of work as well. Um, and uh, when she was around, we also had some great uh, programming elements as well, which we'll talk about later. And also, I, you know, to add here is that uh, many of you that would have been to the museum the last couple of months before lockdown um, certainly would have noticed that there's also been um, some structural changes in the galleries itself. So that is work that has happened. Um, many spaces have, has been opened up, um, more roomier um, kind of divisions uh, moves out. And I think it also uh, for Otterbong's um, exhibition kind of felt really a way that the that the gallery spaces could breathe and that artworks could breathe um and uh, and uh, 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 sean o'toole said in one of his mentions about otterbaum and kanga shows if we can boast a little bit but he said finally zeitz mocha sings a very beautiful um, and poetic exhibition that we that we are very proud of um in the same space where nobuko's exhibition was um uh, and kind of an expanded footprint. Um, we hosted um, Kamang Walehulere, uh, experimental uh, a part of the, the museum that you will see more of in the future, um, where we uh, Koyo invited Kamang to bring his studio um, to the museum, um, and where Kamang um, worked for part of the duration of the, the studio there, not an exhibition or installation in a, in a kind of uh, conventional sense but really a way for the public to also kind of like engage and step into the kind of art, the process of making. Um, and as you know, with art, artwork, especially so much of labor is hidden, it's not seen, um, it's invisible. And so hopefully some of that kind of activity came through. Um, it was also a challenging process for Kamang, of course, um, having kind of the, you know, the public into his private space, studio spaces are often very private, uh, a kind of a way that also that challenged him in his practice um, and likewise also for an institution um, and a museum where usually we deal with with objects um, the focus is so much on keeping things to not change once it's set it's kind of very specific conditions for it into an environment that where things moved around all the time where things could change where objects became artworks um, by simply you know kind of by the way that it got positioned but it was a very kind of important process for us to also kind of like premise a way that we kind of want to interrogate how museums work and could work and challenge that and also kind of like contribute to how we expand the kind of the notion of the museum um, through the way that we engage with with art, artist practice, individual artist practices. Hmm. Yeah, um, so we started off the year with an amazing uh, commission installation piece by a renowned artist Abdullah Konate, an artist from Mali. And um, this was a, a monumental piece, as you can see from, from the slide, that was made out of uh, bits of fabric. And leading up to the installation, it was quite interesting. Every couple of weeks, they would send us videos of how the making process was going. And you can see that um, every single strip is, is individually dyed and stitched together. And um, the title of this piece translates to ideogram, signs, symbols, and logos. And it was in honor of um, Yusuf Tata Sise and Germaine Desselan, who are two iconic um, archaeologists, or sorry, anthropologists, who basically helped to canonize um, Malian literature or, or Malian writing. And um, uh, Yusuf Tata Sise was a good friend of uh, Abdullah Konate. And so if you look at the work, um, what I love to do is as I take people around the museum at different levels of the museum, um, you can identify like a Wi-Fi symbol, you can also identify like ancient Adrinka single symbols, um, some hieroglyphics, a Guni symbol, a Twitter symbol. And it's basically looking at how um, from the, the beginning of time, human beings have always um, been interested, have always basically depended on, on signs and symbols. Like today, uh, we all depend on this really basic Wi-Fi symbol. But um, the lovely thing about the Zeitmarker Atrium is that we can commission um, really important monumental pieces 
that wouldn't otherwise be able to fit in other spaces. And um, that's been really great for me. And it was really nice also to see um, to, to see a conversation between Abdullah Konate and William Kentridge and have groups sit at the bottom of the museum and just stay at the works and talk about what that conversation could be. Fantastic. So yeah, um, as, as Tanazani said also, it's a, it was a commission um, it, and yeah, it's something that we will do in the future as well, that the HM Commission uh, will happen annually. Um, it's the, the kind of monumental scale of the space of course, um, uh, is, 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 is important for us to also think how artists could, could respond to, to this um, site specifically. Um, so you will also see in the future some new engagements with this space. Um, so yes, so uh, related to our exhibitions um, and publications program, um, you know, Zeismoka has really embarked also on a very robust public programming um, uh, programming kind of uh, engagements um, of various scales again like really thinking through the way that our exhibitions um, could be kind of like places for um, I'm sorry for the doorbell not expecting anyone at the moment um, uh, but but that programming is also related to our exhibitions in very kind of direct ways um, I want to just point out from this side uh, we um, in October last year we hosted um, our first you know, large scale symposium on the work of William Kentridge, what happens at the edges, um, where we had a, a day long kind of symposium, uh, really looking at the, um, the kind of intensively at the practice of, of William and kind of like in, in larger context. Um, and what has been important for us was also to, to kind of like foreground artists in conversations um, and engagements uh, for the public. So to really kind of have them present in the space to talk, um, to talk about their practice, to talk about their work. Um, we've had a wonderful engagement, a series of engagements between um, Otterbaum Kanga and Koyo Kuo. Um, it was really extraordinary um, conversations happening. Also thinking how we can have related programming to our exhibitions. So a spoken word event in all corners are traces of many tales. Um, really well attended to, and then Tandazani also hosted two artists that whose work is in, um, currently installed in the same space as part of our Two Together exhibition, um, Longis Kunta and Mishak Mazambu. Really interesting because these artists have never met before, so um, it was a prompt to also bring them into the space for the first time, for a first encounter, and also kind of uh, engage the, that, that dialogue today through. Um, and then, of course, uh, before literally way bef just before lockdown, a wonderful panel discussion: the marks we make um, with Ilzi Wolf, Benici Opus, Kamang, um, Karen Muras, which was really to kind of like think about um, and look at an interrogation of the act of drawing um, and all its complexity. Mm. Yeah, and, and I think just to say, just to add to what Storm has just said about public program, I think what we are always doing internally is thinking about how to diversify our audiences and how to reach different people. And I think um, part of our programming, um, if we go back to um, what we did with Nobuko, because she was a local artist really looking at um, uh, drawing from personal experience, uh, local experience. We were able, we had a wonderful sort of workshop and um, engagement with um, uh, someone who was also interpreting this idea of informal settlements into comics, but also were able to bring that community to the museum as well. And I think um, also to mention that the Solange Knowles screening was a really popular one um, for us as well amongst like young cool Ketonians. So it's been really fascinating to have different people walk through the doors um, for and relate to different types of programming through our exhibitions. Thank you um, Tanazani. Uh, bef just be also before lockdown started we um, initiated a series called Head to Head um, which was prompted by uh, the ability to have conversations um, with leaders in the, the art world. Um, uh, we had a first conversation um, between Koyo Kuo and um, Kate Fowl, who's the director of MoMA PS1 in New York City. Um, and so at the onset of lockdown, it really started something, um, one of the programs that 
uh, in a kind of a very natural, easy way, migrated to to social media, to Instagram, Instagram Live. Um, as you all know, Instagram Live has become a kind of a very important place for dialogue and conversations. And it was a really wonderful way for us to really kind of like connect and feel connected to to others that are in very similar situations to ourselves, or maybe not in similar situations, but also have very particular challenges and opportunities to really kind of like check in um, to 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 kind of feel out where the kind of needs and um, urgencies are, but also to talk about um, uh, to kind of also approach things celebratory and kind of like making connections. And so really uh, uh, an incredible group of people has been um, taking part in these um, from, you know, institutions like the um, the Museum of Contemporary African Art, Al Madin in Morocco, uh, Sonia Lawson from the Palais de Lomé um, in Togo participated. Um, there was a conversation with Mandla Sibeko, um, the uh, founding director and owner of F&B um, Art Joburg. I had a conversation with Rafael Chukukwa, who is the executive director and chief curator at the National Gallery of Zimbabwe. Really a kind of a way for us to also kind of like uh, kind of connect to a network um, in a kind of uh, in, a, in a tangible way. And I think it has been certainly on, from the inside, it's been incredibly helpful to also kind of like tune in, to engage, to understand that others are like kind of in very similar situations and kind of like how we can also share and and kind of, you know, also potentially in the future share resources and collaborate. So uh, a kind of a very important part of the work that we have done, um, yeah, um, kind of during the lockdown um, period. Yeah, so we were missing one of our monthly programs, uh, was a Friday. And was a Friday basically came about uh, because the museum wanted to create a late night offering. Um, so it would happen uh, every first Friday of the month. Um, and it would be half price. And it was a way of creating something extra for audiences who maybe cannot come during the day um, and um, create like a, a sort of lighter entertaining entertainment evening where people can go around the museum and, and engage in various things. So because of lockdown, obviously we couldn't do it, but we decided to replace it with a hosa at home so that you can still have that late night offering um, from your couch from your home um, and also be able to still communicate and engage with friends. Um, so we had our second one this last uh, Saturday. We now do it on a Saturday. Um, we've also moved the time so that friends from um, other countries can also engage um, with us as well. And it's, it, it's included a making, there's always a making element. So this last, Hosa at home, we had a um, doll making session with our Center for Art Education, and uh, we had the great honor of having Zenzemi Maricela join us. The whole making session was inspired by her work, and so it was really great to have the artist herself be part of that process. We had um, a cake maker who was uh, creating Jody, Jody Paulson inspired cake. We've had a cocktail making session. So usually when you sign up, you get um, the ingredients emailed to you and then you can pretty much make cocktails um, from your living room. Um, just to remind you about the Zeitzmacher restaurant and, <laughs> and all of the great offerings that they usually have. Um, we also had a fashion focus. So we were thinking about um, the artists that are currently on view or have been on view this year at Zeitzmoka. And we looked at um, this element of style and fashion and we were trying to think about art history, uh, fashion, and we had a, an, an interesting panel discussion. So the idea is just to create some um, light entertainment and engagement um, at least once a month. Yeah, no, to add to that, you know, um, Tanizani, of course, for us, the, the hard thing is like not to be able to gather. This is like, we also, you know, museums are places not only to engage with objects and kind of like, you know, to, to be in a space with artworks, but it's also places where we gather, where we meet, um, you know, where we engage, where we, where we listen, where we, where we talk, where we, you know, and those are the aspects that we kind of deeply miss. And, 
and, and whilst there's been an adaption, I think, for many institutions into the digital realm, and this is an example for us to also be able to engage with our public that might not be able to come into at the moment. Um, it's actually also, I think, kind of like shifted um, our thinking about how we can also, Tanazani, as you said earlier, how we also reach international audiences better. Like previously, our talks program, for example, were not broadcast very successfully. I think we've tried some things with getting some of our talks streaming, you know, or like as part of an Instagram live situation. But I think it's definitely made us think when we also go back to the museum and the museum reopens. Um, I think we should really think about like how we can um, have ways that we can do both um, because it's been very helpful and kind of positive for us to see the kind of uptake not only from um, you know kind of our local supporters um, and members but also how international interests are there for our, for our programming and kind of what we what we are offering and what we are bringing to the table so yeah wars at home is this moment of celebration for us um, and um, please keep your eye, we, um, there's uh, some exciting plans. It's a monthly event. Um, so, so please tune in for our next, um, next edition. Yeah. Um, so I'd also like to talk about our, the Center for Art Education. And um, so before lockdown, um, part of the regular programming is, uh, I'm kind of like struggling, where do I begin? Because they do so much. <laughs> and um, part of our regular programming included uh, Wednesday open studio sessions, which was basically where on a Wednesday we used to offer the public uh, free entrance if you were an African citizen, i.e. if you had a passport from any African country. And so we also took advantage of that day to have an open studio session where families could come and just sit and make uh, work uh, or items that were inspired by local exhibitions. Um, we had a daily tour and workshop program where schools and um, other groups could book for specialized education tours. And um, yeah, since inception, we've been involved with community collaborations. For example, with uh, we have a partnership with the Butterfly Art Pro Project um, and La Lela. La Lela actually. Um, uh, when it's not locked down, they actually are in the museum working with us about four times a week. So it's been really interesting seeing the different types of um, young audiences come in. Um, but we've also, tr in the last year, tried to really tailor our, or focus our programming on our big exhibitions, especially since uh, we had the William Kentridge exhibition. Um, through the William Kentridge exhibition, we had various teachers' workshops. Uh, William Kentridge is an artist who is in the school curriculum, so that proved to be very, in the local South African school curriculum, so that proved to be very useful for a lot of teachers within the Western Cape. Um, we have a, a holiday program, and we have, uh, we work with the Western Cape Education Department, um, and we for, specifically for the William Kentridge exhibition, we worked, um, we had a partnership with the Peter Clark Art Center where um, all of the students um, created work in response to the exhibition and um, uh, titled that mini exhibition, No Hesitation. So it was really lovely to see all those responses. I think in the last year, um, our education department has also tried to focus on creating educational resources. So it's not enough for you to just come with a school group to the museum and leave again, um, even if you have a great time. We want you to go home with something. We want teachers to go with resources or at least to know that they can download things from um, online. Um, and we want, especially in, in areas where the art departments are not strong or our teachers are not, uh, don't have enough resources or supported, we really want to empower them. So that's what we're trying to do through our Center for Art Education. Um, and we've done pretty much the same with other exhibitions, but I want to particularly focus on um, And So the Stories Ran Away. This was the first exhibition that we created for, um, it was specifically made for young people, specifically made for learners. So it's an exhibition where um, different, the Center for Art Education worked with um, Michaela's School of Art, the Nyanga Arts Center, um, and various others 
um, so basically tertiary students to create work um, specifically for children. And so each work is inspired by a story that comes from somewhere on the African continent. And there's been various forms of programming around that, including booklets, um, talks, and it's been very popular. It's been, it's actually like really heartwarming to see families and kids come. It's the only place, this exhibition is in the tunnels of Zeitzmacher, for those of you who've been there. And so, first of all, the tunnels are just, they're just an exciting place to be because you can get lost in them. Um, but now imagine um, families or young people getting lost in the tunnels and coming across um, all this artwork. And it's the only place where you can touch the artwork. So anywhere else you can't touch. But um, in, within the tunnels and within this exhibition, um, kids are encouraged to climb into things, to climb over things. Um, it's very interactive. Uh, parents can read stories to kids. Um, and um, yeah, and this, we've also had, we've been, since inception, we've been working with um, pretty much all of the universities, but I just wanted to highlight the University of Cape Town School of Medicine and the arts program. It was fascinating to see how um, uh, the transdisciplinary nature of collaboration can also take place and also have young artists in, in residence. Thank you, Tanazani. I also just want to mention that the person in the picture here, um, Liesl Hartmann, who's our head of uh, the Center of Art Education, um, is an extraordinary person. Shout out to her, um, yeah. uh, uh, Richard uh, Kilpert and Mandisa as well, who's doing kind of amazing work, um, you know, in kind of maintaining uh, an extraordinary program that has seen up to 15,000 people a year um, mm -hmm. touched by the Center for Art Education. So a very, just the heart of the, the heart of the institution. Yeah. Um, so obviously the nature of the Center for Art Education is that it encourages gathering. And you could see from the previous picture, all those kids in the same room. But because of uh, COVID, we can't do that anymore. But the work doesn't stop. It's just inspired us to think differently and to think more creatively. Um, so um, the Center for Art Education has used this time to really focus on resource development that can be shared locally and internationally and for our visitors. Um, it's been a time for lots of deep research. Um, previously, you know, we would have um, maybe 10 schools a week sometimes, so there wasn't a lot of time to really think and reflect. So it's been a, a great time for research. And um, they've started creating online educational programming. So what you see in the images are part of our um, the online open studios that have now moved to YouTube. So you can still, families can still engage with Zeitzmoka um, anytime and um, create uh, fun things together in response to local artists. Um, the, they always um, contribute to the making element of Rosa at home. And um, since lockdown, they've also been uh, the Center for Art Education has also been involved with community of practice meetings, which is basically our way of saying, hey, listen, we're all going through the same things. We're all dealing with how do we, how do we um, continue to create an impact? How do we um, continue to do what we do without gathering? And that has involved um, lots of different uh, collaborators, including the Butterfly Art Project, City of Cape Town, the Lela, the Peter Clark Art Center, um, in Bali Visual Arts, um, Vitz Art Museum, and the Javit Art Center, to name a few. Great. Um, thank you, Tanazani. And I think for us, um, moving a little bit towards um, the things that are not always visible, um, you know, kind of a lot of our work, of course, most of our work is public facing. Um, but, you know, kind of for the last while, Zeit Smoker has also really gone into a process of also kind of like research networking um, and a, a kind of a way for us to also kind of like really connect with with various um, actors to to really um, consider how we are part of uh, the ecosystem or as Koyokura says the field um, that we operate in and, and how we connect with others um, it's, uh, we've been hosting kind of internal roundtable gatherings um, regularly um, since last year, November, um, various kind of engagements um, with various people, often connected to um, our curatorial teams, individual networks that we might bring to, to the table, 
um, but we've also moved these um, roundtable meetings um, into kind of like uh, um, onto Zoom, so similar to this, but these are really kind of ways for us to also sometimes test some of our kind of research topics to, to kind of engage others to, um, before lockdown, it was around a meal, so that was really also a way of gathering. Um, it is a, a way for us to also like kind of, you know, kind of, um, uh, kind of, kind of give out a, you know, a, engage in a kind of communal way with others within um, the city as well. But we've also opened that kind of into the kind of digital way, um, digital realm, um, kind of like since lockdown, and we'll continue to do these um, internal internal gatherings. Um, at the beginning of lockdown, um, we hosted a, 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 art and, a Cape Town Art and Heritage Stakeholder Meeting. That was really at the start of lockdown to, again, also kind of like check in with others, other organizations, um, kind of feel out, um, you know, kind of how we can support each other, what the kind of like immediate kind of urgencies were, how we can support each other. Um, and this is certainly some of the work that we um, hope to continue to do um, with others. Um, yeah, um, so we've also used this time to do, to, for all of us to do a lot of research and capacity building. Um, and we've had uh, quite a few internal workshops. So um, one of our workshop was on uh, policy on procedures on art handling. And we had, it was really amazing to also connect with other African museums such as the National Gallery of Zimbabwe and talk to their conservation department and just really kind of tighten our policies and procedures and think about how um, we can just uh, continue to do things excellently. And each one of us uh, within the curatorial team were, um, were given, were tasked with a, a research question in a field that we're interested in. Um, so, for example, our exhibitions manager, Julia Kabat, um, she was looking at how does a developing institution create a strategy of sustainability in exhibition making. There's a lot of waste um, that is involved in exhibition making. So how do we change that? How do we become more efficient? Um, our gallery, one of our gallery guides, Michael Jacobs, he was looking at how does oral literature exist within African contemporary art institution and museums? Um, and it was pretty fascinating to see how he as a gallery guide who spends um, most of his day um, helping people um, understand um, or engage with the work better, um, thinking about language and literature and what does engagement um, locally mean. Um, and then I was looking at um, uh, how the mu museum can become a receptacle of African knowledge production, a platform for ideas, archives through publishing. Um, uh, Poking Sitai looked at how does the museum reinscribe Africa into a discourse but without integrating it within a framework that did not have space for thinking about it. Um, our assistant register, Z was looking at how can a museum be inclusive. Um, and uh, our head of art education was thinking about how do we take our content into communities considering the following different modes and forms of physical engagement, extending our digital programming. And there were lots more, that's just a few. And um, so we all basically embarked in about a month of extensive research and um, had like a two week long workshop where we were presenting these ideas to each other. And it's been really refreshing to sort of um, step off the treadmill and uh, think, reflect together as we uh, look forward to getting back into the groove of things. Yeah, and it, thank you, Tanizani. The, the prompt also, you know, came from um, Koyo uh, to to the curatorial team to was to to ask us also like if we, you know, what can we, you know, is it there's also an opportunity to really do things differently, or kind of can we really shift the way that an institution is going? Can we can we adjust? Can we? What are the ways? Where do we improve? Um, where are the gaps? What is our, you know, where are our blind spots? Um, can we also look at ourselves critically and say, you know, find ways that work, um, that work better? Um, and, and so this moment was, a, I think, also a responsibility for us to use this time 
in a way to kind of like for a very intensive like reflection process and as Tanazani she said like research um, and then to also kind of like encourage Tanazani like you said a, a kind of individual interest um, and to get those voices around the table and everybody getting the opportunity then to present their position um, and in the process also kind of shaping something collectively um, through this process. So it brings us to what's next Next up. Um, <laughs> um, as you, you all know that um, the museum is still closed. Um, we are currently finalizing exactly when the museum will reopen. Um, I mean, I think it's also a moment for us to maybe just briefly talk about the challenges that we as an institution face, like many others. Um, the reality is, is that without any kind of warning, um, as many of you know, um, you know, operations had to stop. Um, and with that stopping, um, a large part of the, the institution's income also, which is driven through, um, uh, through ticket sales, through membership uh, uh, sales, um, through the shop, through the restaurant, kind of really just came to, to a complete standstill and has been since, you know, kind of um, since that time, which is like about five months now. Um, and so the kind of challenges for us to, to, to really kind of like think about how we, how we become, you know, uh, how, we, how we use the resources that we have um, and what our kind of planning is, is very important. Um, understanding also that a large part of Zeitzmoker um, uh, kind of visitors are international and those that support us. We know that that, that segment of our, um, of our planning and people will not return for a, in the short term. Um, so the kind of like adjustment and adaptions has been something kind of quite significant as for many other institutions. Um, but also to say that what is important right now um, Who's our who's our who's our media communities and audiences that that we that we um, that we serve and how do we connect with them and so that's something that's kind of central to our thinking um, going going forward um, and of course lots of work at the, has is going on in terms of um, fundraising in terms of like planning for the future um, so we will kind of announce very soon officially. Um, when we're opening, but it's very imminent um, and there's some some news coming up on that. Um, we are happy to also, for some of you who don't know, to say that Zeitzmoker Museum Shop has been trading um, uh, in the v &A waterfront in a kiosk. Very, very proud of this. Um, so please, if you go through the v &A, please support us. There's some wonderful things um, available by some of uh, some amazing a wonderful artist so it's also a way for you to 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 support us um, and we're very excited to um, to have this activity um, going um, at the moment uh, coming up soon <laughs> yeah coming up um, in a few weeks is um and uh, what we're calling on radical solidarity which is basically an online summit um, and uh, Basically, you know, without physical gatherings, we're thinking about this idea of um, um, how can we support each other? What sort of gestures um, can we do to support one another as um, the art ecosystem, but also thinking about the context of solidarity and thinking about um, uh, basically how to if there's been a lot of uh, discourse around um, resistance and justice, and how can and how can we basically come together as um, individuals and organisations, academics or art enthusiasts, to think about what does radical solidarity mean in a practical way? And so we are um, we're going to have this online summit over a period of five days. And it will include uh, discursive elements such as panel discussions, um, some performative elements, some film screenings, some Instagram takeovers. And those five themes that we'll focus on for each day would be uh, solidarity, historical context of pan-Africanism and transnational struggle, printed matter, text, language, transmission of knowledge, 
on collectivity and collaboration as radical practice, urban imaginaries, mobilities, and why so many borders, um, radical practices and radical solidarity. And we just want to um, open up this platform for everyone to come and, and engage and um, also be part of that conversation. Um, we will very soon announce a new major exhibition, um, which will take the notion of home at heart. Um, and very excited about this, this project. Uh, we um, envisage a democratic open forum um, for the arts in Cape Town and art by Cape Townians. Um, really a celebration of our city um, and uh, wish I could tell you more right now, but we will be able to do so very, very soon. So please keep an eye out for, um, for our kind of announcements um, that will launch um, the, the process of, of, of a new project um, for the opening of the museum, uh, the, re the reopening of the museum. Mm. So um, when lockdown happened in South Africa, we had to put a lot of uh, things on pause, a lot of our programming on pause, and we had to uh, push out and um, postpone a lot of our programming. So when the museum reopens, we're looking forward to hosting a solo exhibition by Alfredo Jar, and it will be looking uh, mainly at um, the Rwanda project, his Rwanda project, and um, we thought that this was a timely exhibition given that it's been 25 years since the Rwanda genocide. We are very excited to um, host the first museum exhibition by Sinzeni Marasela, a South African artist based in Johannesburg, um, who has uh, been working um, with the kind of uh, kind of on, on, on notions of labor, um, very particular kind of histories, uh, family histories, and also histories related to, to, to Johannesburg itself, a project called Waiting for Gabane, um, which we are very excited about. Um, that's coming up um, kind of in November um, this year. And um, next February, we're looking forward to Tracy Rose's biggest ever retrospective exhibition. Um, this will basically be a showcasing of work from 1990 to present day. And um, it will be accompanied by her first ever mono artist monograph. We have over 12 writers. So it's going to be a really big, thick, heavy coffee table book, which I'm really excited about. Um, and we'll have lots of different, I think it'll have, you know, a lot of the work that people are very familiar with, the works that have been cited over and over again um, in different articles, but works that maybe um, most people haven't seen, um, including 200 drawings. So um, yeah, we're looking forward to that next February if all goes well. And also to say that we, um, you know, that the scale of the project is similar to, um, you know, the kind of larger scale projects that we're doing. So it's a multi-floor project um, on Tracy, um, which is again, similar to Sinzani, um, a kind of a long due kind of look at a kind of important practices um, of, of these artists. Um, and especially also Tracy, she's been a, a radical voice um, for a long time, she's been uncompromising in her her practice. So um, it's it's a, a very very important moment for us as well um, to profile mm -hmm. an artist like Tracy um, and also of course Sinzani. Um, so this is a, a kind of end of our formal presentation. I'm sure there might be questions and responses to us, um, Matthew. I'm not sure how you would like to to handle this part, um, but thank you again for for this engagement. Um, and uh, very pleased to be able to share with you in a very short way what we've been doing and what's what's lying ahead in the future. Thank you so much, um, Storm, and uh, thank you so much, Tanazani. It's um, really amazing, I suppose, and in a way, um, tantalizing to know what's um, to know what's uh, coming up. Um, I think uh, 
a lot of audiences, a lot of audiences, whilst um, this has been, it's uh, it created the ability for people to become, I suppose, more familiar with these institutions, really. I think one of the end goals is uh, the fact that, um, you know, all of this, uh, I suppose, social distance gathering um, in its ironic sense uh, is really leading up to get uh, feedback into museums. Um, and I think the, the, you know, in the as storm, as you were saying, in the words of Koyo was to, I suppose, take the time and, and establish first principles um, and, and really uh, get to grips with what the mission of the museum is. And I think, um, I like to think that we are going to um, come out stronger from it. Um, and I suppose it's these kinds of, these kinds of, um, these kinds of times of crisis really uh, lead us to, to an incredible amount of team building. And, um, you know, with all the exciting pro um, projects, not only the internal team, but I suppose the, the broader scope of the art world um, is also a team of constituents that we that we work with them um, and so i think uh, as a as a solidifying as a solidifying uh, 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 home for the arts and um, when those doors open uh, in the not too distant future as you're alluding to i think it's um i think it's a very exciting very exciting moment and certainly i've become a little bit more familiar although um with uh, some of the some of the institutions uh, sort of core functionings and um, i think there was just a, an observation from um, somebody in the in the group that uh, they said, you know, oh, I haven't seen some of these exhibitions, you know, and even though it was on our back door. So I think it's a, a really a, a wonderful opportunity to encourage uh, to encourage uh, a feedback into the museum. Um, I would just also like to say um, uh, that this um, recording of this broadcast will be available on our YouTube channel. Um, so um, please uh, please do not feel um, do not hesitate to. Um, and go and have a look if you didn't catch um, the beginning or the end um, and also um, please feel free to share it I think the more uh, people that we've got um, uh, speaking to us about uh, these institutions and becoming familiar with these institutions um, the better I think you know also one of the one of the abilities that this has got is to I suppose break the barrier of um, of the that initial dauntedness of, of the of members of the public um how do you feel the storm have you have you noticed um have you noticed sort of the ability to build new constituencies um in this uh, in these in these experiences and endeavors like instagram live and and these uh never-ending seemingly never-ending zoom calls uh, absolutely yes so i mean i one of my initial anxieties was like you know kind of are we doing too much online kind of people fatigue and are they not going to tune in and things and so uh, i had a conversation with a friend of mine that's you know heavy into so, uh, social media uh, expert in the us and, and she just said listen you you know audience will tune in and out as they need we don't have to worry about that so and i also don't think it's a competition you know like sometimes you feel like oh so and so is also doing instagram live and this is also happening on zoom um, I don't think anything takes away from anybody else. Uh, I think the fact that there's so much activity and so much dialogue is happening that is so that for many people are accessible. I think we also need to not fool ourselves that we're making accessible things uh, all the time because it's online. Um, let's also be pausing and saying that for many it's not accessible, um, but more accessible certainly in some some ways um, that. It, it, it does improve. I think the, the fact that there's dialogue, I think that I can tune in to so many other institutions on the continent itself that's been engaging in social media more than ever before. I think it's a plus for us. It's a way for us to really be connected. Honestly, I don't think it's going to take away from our, 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 our need and kind of want to be in, in the same spaces as others. There's energies and there's ways that we connect and communicate that will not be replaced. But certainly, um, it's important for us to to have this moment right now to do it. And I think your question about audiences, yes, I also feel that we've had the opportunity to 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 see kind of like engagements that wasn't there before. Like I said, certainly from a from the continent, um, you know, kind of people elsewhere on the continent, and also um, in Europe and the U.S. That's tuning in more. Um, we've seen an uptake in our wars at home activities. Um, from one edition, the first edition to the next, we also fine tuning and understanding what works better and what doesn't. 
so yeah i think it's important for us to stay connected like this and so much of contemporary art and i think also the place where we're coming from is it is about dialogue and so much of koyo's practice and and my own and others in the curatorial team is about dialogue engagement so this is a great way for us to continue the work as well whilst we can't come to the museum um and we will get to the museums or museums you know as we know many cape town museums are also opening soon um we looking forward to that experience um and i suppose Tamazani, um, i also wanted to pick your pick your brain as just i suppose from the from your experience of um the institution from the, from the early days of of the hard hat to to i suppose this 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 period of this period of um, slowing down, closing, reevaluating, and preparing to, I suppose, reopen, as uh, Storm suggested earlier. What do you find, um, you know, with with this um, with this sort of um, three going on four years experience of the institution? How do you feel that your your experience of the of the sort of the the psychic infrastructure of the space or the way that you reach out to audiences? How do you think this has forced you to reevaluate things, and how do you, how will you take this experience going forward, operating in the museum um, as a as a as a curator? Mm. Um, that's a great question. I think it all. I can boil it all down to institutional humility, um, and just becoming more and more aware that whatever we're building as sites mocker is we're building on the shoulders of so many amazing individuals and organizations before us who've been working um, on the continent or in the diaspora for, for decades. Um, and institutional humility is, is something that, you know, Koyo has kept repeating this past year that she's been here as well. And I think when you have um, institutional humility, you're able to introspect and, um, you're open to collaborating more um, horizontally and um, you have a better, more mutually beneficial exchange, but you're also saying, you're also um, acknowledging that you're still building and you're still um, developing as you go. And it gives you more of a flexibility rather than trying to limit you or categorize you in a specific way. Um, but also, I think with each year, it's been great to, to start thinking again. I said it earlier about diversifying our, our audiences. Um, the, the audience that came to the William Kentridge Symposium is very different from the audience that came to the Solange Noel screening on the roof, um, to the one that went to, uh, came to Nobuko Taba's um, workshop. And it's, it's, it's heartwarming because I don't think we can be exhaustive or fully representational or reach everyone, but I think we do need to keep striving um, for this idea of creating more access for, especially for previously disadvantaged communities, especially as, you know, as the world, or at least in our um, local situation, continue to think about our ideas around justice. Absolutely. Um, I'd like. I love the. I love the, the the phrase that you used that we had to learn to become more flexible because I think that really speaks to the spirit of. I suppose I can't say our age because, um, uh, but our most immediate time now with uh, these past four months is uh, really become become. I suppose a testament for me to the human spirit um, and. Uh, um, you know, in, in our adaptability and, um, and the way that, uh, as you said, uh, the way that we can become flexible in our way of doing things and how we can discover new solutions. So um, with that, as I see we're coming up to five o'clock, I'm going to extend my heartfelt thanks on behalf of Strauss & Co to Tandazai Dlakama and uh, Storm Jansa van Rensburg for joining us from the Zeitz Museum of Contemporary Art from Africa. Um, and you've been uh, hosted by Strauss & Co. this afternoon with Museum Moments. Um, stay safe, ladies and gentlemen, and have a good evening. Storm and Tandazani, Tandazani, thank you so much for joining us and giving us your time this evening. Uh, it was really incredible, and uh, I'm sure that you will have, uh, you, you, you're going to have some new patrons uh, 
from the from the outset. I'm looking forward to those announcements. Well, just before we go, um, just so we can, um, I'll remind everybody that uh, this talk, this broadcast, will be on our YouTube channel later this evening. Um, and then I would also just like to um, just quickly ask a question. So we've got some imminent imminent announcements um, of, uh, of programming and um, and potential opening. Where must people look out for those those pieces of information so we can uh, so so any any new visitors um, we can find out when um, when the museum will be open to the public again. So please join us um, on Zeitsmoker um, Instagram um, and also on Twitter. Um, our handle um, is pretty obvious, Zeitsmoka. You can find us easily. Uh, please join us there. Um, and the best way to find us, you can also send us DMs. We love DMs. Um, so, so yeah, please, please engage with us there. Um, it's maybe the easiest for most. Fantastic. Yeah. Storm, thank and you. Thank you, can you so also much. Subscribe, you can also subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, and how do we do that? <laughs> uh, via the website. Okay, fantastic. So that is uh, just what's your what's your web handle? Just so we've got um, for the audience. Uh, dot museum. Dot museum. Fantastic. So, ladies and gentlemen, please um, just bear that in mind um, for the Zeitmarker uh, newsletter. Please go and visit their website at Zeitmarker dot museum and uh, subscribe to their website and describe to the newsletter for uh, for some uh, any news. Uh, and uh, I think there's going to be some some exciting uh, upcoming announcements so please keep your eyes peeled again thanks to you both um from thank the you team matthew team. and uh thank, thank you so you much to the smoke and strauss and company for this evening stay well and stay safe bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.